Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Meeting now underway at UWI Mona campus following protest last night. Government earmarks $50 million for drought mitigation. And later in sports, West Indies name limited over squad for South Africa. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shane Masters and here are the details. We begin with a developing story. A meeting is underway with the chairman of the Chancellor Hall and other affected parties surrounding a protest at the University of the West Indies Mona campus Sunday evening. The students are calling for the Student Services and Development Manager of Mary C. Cole Hall, Dr. Nadine Spence, to step down. It follows an alleged altercation with a student on Sunday at the Sports Day event. Dr. Spence has denied the allegations. Now we'll provide more details in subsequent newscasts. With drought conditions worsening across the country, Minister with Responsibility for Water, Matthew Samuda, says $50 million has been earmarked for drought mitigation works. The municipal corporations will hear today how much funds they will each receive. However, speaking on TVJ's Smart Jamaica Monday morning, Mr. Samuda said the funds will not be split evenly. We've done a metric that, that compares um, population as well as using the standard precipitation index. So who, okay. has, who has the worst gotcha. drought? Yeah. We'll get, it's, not, it's not widely varied, yeah. but there are population concerns as well as those who have been without water longest. Yeah. So for instance, because of additional road work in the area of Eastern St. Thomas and Eastern Portland, they need a little um, more, more assistance. Yeah. Clarendon has been a scorching with heat and with lack of rain. So they will need some assistance in both the Northern and the Southern Belt. In the meantime, he says Jamaicans should be concerned about the rapid depletion of the island's water supplies, especially with less rainfall. From as far as October, we saw declines against our 30-year average rainfall in most parishes. Um, that has continued to worsen. I would have just received the final data for January this morning on the we here and in 11 of 13 parishes, your standard precipitation index has fallen, meaning we've continued to receive less, less rain. So we are already way below our 30 year average um, across most of the it's island. Easy. Two months into the new year and over 40 people have been killed on the nation's road. As Sandra Williams reports, one motorist was killed and four others hospitalized. Broken trees, a car visibly damaged and disjointed car parts evidence of a collision that occurred about 6 30 p.m on sunday the crash happened on the north south leg of highway 2000 operations officer for the st catherine south police division superintendent hopton nicholson was traversing the area at the time of the crash when i heard uh, a loud sound behind my vehicle when i looked i realized that at least two uh, vehicles had collided and one of the vehicles hit the embankment and went over into uh, a deep ravine uh, close by. It's believed that speeding was a major factor. That's what we were told that the gentleman was speeding all the way from uh, some parts of St. Anne trying to reach to Spanish Town and uh, was driving very reckless on the road as other motorists would have uh, stated when they came to this location. Emergency responders including a unit from the fire brigade and health services department were later called to the scene. Uh, they managed to extract five persons from the ravine and the four of them were transported to the hospital. One of the persons uh, was pronounced dead on location by a medical doctor who was passing. Two other persons received injuries and they were taken to the hospital for treatment. Two children, a nine-year-old and a three-month-old, are among those injured in the crash. This latest incident has pushed the total number of road fatalities since the start of the year to more than 40. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. Another employee of the Grand Bahia Hotel in St. Anne died this morning. His identity has not yet been revealed. Reports are that he took his vehicle to a car wash close by and was walking back to work when he was hit. He died at the scene. 
Now, this is the second employee to die within 48 hours. Farmers stealing from farmers. That's what one St. Thomas farmer believes has been driving the ongoing Pradia larceny on his farm in East Albion. In one day alone, he said he lost over $300,000 in farming supplies to Pradial thieves. Kelisha Williams has that story. It will take more than chains and locks to keep Pradial thieves out of this farm. And the owner said he's running out of ideas. The estimate I want me really lose is about just a little over 300000 Okay? But buy a hundred and twenty something thousand dollar water fertilizer and may have to replace replace the chemical when I buy over a hundred thousand dollar may have to still replace it after they steal it and then still come back and thief again. So it has been a cat and mouse game with the thieves for weeks and we were told there is no limit to what they steal. Then thief your oars, then cut off your oars and do everything. Because recently, as up to Thursday night, they came here and cut off the fertigation was just like that. Even more intriguing, he believes farmers are the ones driving Prada larceny, not only on his farm, but island-wide, which is why he's appealing for the agriculture minister to intervene. It's a shame on farmer to do all those things. And we are compatriot, brother in farming and sister, and them come and steal the same way. In the meantime, during a tour of the farms in the parish recently, Agriculture Minister Pernell Charles Jr. responded to some of the concerns. We are and have been for the last year focused on developing the framework. We have a submission that's going to Cabinet that will allow for us to advance our agricultural wardens. Uh, we have a submission that's going to help us to bring the investment that is needed to increase the technology around predator last the prevention. Um, and through RADA and through our team at the ministry, we have been training the police all of last year. We took the time. We have trained up our police officers across all areas in Peter Lasley prevention. A comprehensive renovation of the Charles Gordon Market in Montego Bay St. James is now underway. However, the work is being impeded by some vendors who are reluctant in leaving the space. Hal Shane Burke has more. Vendors at the Charles Gordon Market will soon benefit from a totally revamped space. The government is spending millions of dollars for the upgrade after years of complaints about the dilapidated state. Following a recent tour of the facility, local government minister Desmond McKenzie says some 35 beams which supports the roof will either be replaced or where possible fixed. But what is the challenge with those beams? I am amazed when the superintendent advised me that the beams that have been affected almost all of them has been a combination of human errors where persons have been urinating against the beams and that urination over time with the various liquids that have been used to wash the market has contributed significantly to the decay he says the materials which will be used in the renovation work will be able to withstand urination and other liquids for a longer period. The concrete stalls will also be demolished and replaced with more modern facilities. However, that has been a challenge for the renovation team as some vendors are adamant that they will not leave the space. Hence this appeal by Minister McKenzie. I want to urge the vendors and persons who are using the market uh, to purchase their goods that this side of the market is out of bounds. It is under construction and God forbid if somebody comes inside here and something happens. That is what we don't want. In the meantime, Mayor of Montego Bay, Leroy Williams, says vendors will be provided with updates on the project as it relates to where they will ply their wares in the interim. I could not say definitively exactly what is going to be done. Mr. Mayor, why no? Why this wasn't done before the work actually started? Um, well, I think it could be um, short-sightedness, and you know, on the part of the, the officers. But how long will the works take? The superintendent advised me that this first phase of the columns will take about three months, um, hoping that they will be able to conclude that within that period. 
But while they are doing that, the demolitions of these stars will commence. And once that is done, then we move to the next phase of phase one, because phase one have about two or three components, which will be the roof already, the design and everything has been secured for the repairs on the roof. Hal Shaneberg reporting for TVJ News. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News. Stay with us. Much more stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. Appeals for Jamaica to center the trend in reducing food waste and promote a plant-based diet in the Caribbean. At least one international chef believes it's important as the rest of the world turns to more sustainable options to protect their health and the environment. Kalisha Williams has our story. We have plant-based steaks, plant-based uh, eggs, vegan eggs, you know, so this is the new trend which is going to come and you'll see more and more often what's going to happen. Director and consultant at Hospitality 365, Chef Ravi Ann, speaking at a function at the Cardiff Hotel in St. Anne over the weekend. He believes as one of the tourism hubs in the Caribbean, Jamaica will have to lead the way. This is a trendsetter for, for the Caribbean. So whatever we do, the whole Caribbean matches it. And the whole Caribbean want to learn from Jamaica and it's very important. But how? The island has a very high consumption rate of chicken and chicken byproducts. Well, Chef Ravi said it has to start with how chefs are taught at culinary schools. Today it was wonderful to see uh, the young commis chef preparing a vegan cashew mayonnaise. Because if you talk about mayonnaise, what is the major ingredient in mayonnaise is your egg yolk and a clarified butter, which is basically dairy products. But today, the commis chef highlighted how to substitute to make it more healthy and vegan by using cashew as a substitute of egg yolk. As for reducing waste, he explained what is happening in places like the United States. All Good To Go is an app where they, it is a very prominent app in states where they're taking all the foods out of various restaurants which is not being sold, offering at 50% discount to all the public. Actually, they're, they're doing the home deliveries because they're ensuring that the food is not going to go into waste. This, he believes, is important to promote a healthier and more sustainable environment, especially in the tourism industry. These are the things which are going to be the future of, of the gastronomy. How you can sustain environment at the same time, how you can sustain and they have sustained the future of our children and grandchildren and how you can sustain your health, how you can provide good nutrition to your body. Kelisha Williams, TVJ News. It's now time for the Business Minute. Jamaica's import bill is nearing a record high since 2011. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica, Statin, is reporting that 6.4 billion US dollars was spent on goods coming into the country for the first 10 months of last year. That figure already exceeds the sum spent on imports for all years leading up to 2022 except 2019. Statin says this increase was mainly due to the higher costs associated with the import of gas and gas products, raw materials and intermediate goods and consumer goods. Further afield in the United States, wholesale prices for used cars have risen sharply in the last few weeks. According to data from Mannheim, prices jumped 4% in just the last two weeks. The jump also caught industry insiders by surprise. Now, a shortage of new car inventory helped drive both new and used car prices to record levels earlier last year. A shortage of parts, particularly computer chips, caused automakers to scale their production back far below the demand for new vehicles and pushed potential new car buyers, even rental car companies, into the used car market. And that's it for the Business Minute. Now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, the Guyanese government is urging Venezuela to fully comply with the Geneva Agreement that was implemented 57 years ago to resolve the border conflict between both nations. In a statement marking the anniversary of the signing, the government accused Venezuela of undermining the agreement over the years to frustrate the resolution by judicial process, even though it is obliged to participate. Under the Geneva Agreement, that controversy is now before the international court. The Guyanese government says it has absolute confidence in the court. 
The government added that any unilateral attempt by Venezuela to restrict the exercise of its sovereignty and sovereign rights will be wholly inconsistent with the Geneva Agreement and the rule of international law. On the international scene, a Doctors Without Borders MSF-8 convoy of 14 trucks entered northwestern Syria via Turkey on Sunday. The convoy carries 1,296 tents and winter kits for families left homeless because of the earthquake. MSF added that other convoys are planned to follow quickly to deliver medical and non-medical equipment. The medical aid charity underlined the urgent need of supplies in Syria, saying in the 10 days following the earthquake, the number of trucks that crossed the border into northwest Syria was lower than the average number for 2022. MSF says there are some 180,000 newly displaced people in Syria following the deadly earthquake earlier this month. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Kimon Witter. And we head to a quick break. When we come back, Jordan Ford will have your midday sports report.